Hey, what's up? Welcome back to this restaurant app that we're building with Flutter. So far, we have this nice little intro page and then the user can browse through the menu and tap into an individual food item. So now let's implement this add to cart button. And I'll also show you how to remove items from the cart as well. By the way, if you're a beginner trying to get into app development, I wrote a little handbook for people like you who have no coding experience at all. I designed the book with a complete beginner in mind, so the book starts off with the basics of programming, and then I show you all of the essential widgets and concepts for you to start building apps yourself. This is a book that I really wish I had when I first started Flutter, so yeah, I hope this helps the beginners out there. I'll have it linked below. So in the last one, we left off from this food details page and we can control this quantity. Now one thing, little bug that we're going to fix is we don't want no negative quantities, right? So let's actually fix that one first. So when we decrease it, just make sure to do a quick check and only decrease it if there is quantity, like greater than zero. So yep, it should work now. Cool, so now let's try to implement the add to cart button. So the first thing we have to do is we have to set up a separate class just to handle all of our data. So if you look at our menu page, this is where we stored our menu initially. But now let's go to our models and I'm gonna create a new class here called shop. And so this is where I'm going to just copy that menu and we're going to place it in our shop class. So now we can have something called a customer's cart and let's put underscores on these to make it private and also the getter methods as well. Okay, so we can access this information from around the code. Cool, and the two methods we need to implement here is the add to cart and also the removing from cart. Now, when we add to cart, we need to know the item, like the food item and also the quantity. So we're gonna do a quick for loop and let's just add each item in. And for the removing cart, all we need to know is which item we're going to remove. So as long as we know that food, then we can just remove it from our cart. Awesome, so now that we have this shop class set up, what we need to do is I'm going to go to my pubspec.yaml and we're going to use a package called provider, which is a very common package to use for some simple state management, which I actually just made a video on it. So if you need some explanation on this, then you can watch that video, but I can show you real quick. So what we're going to do is we're going to extend this shop class to the change notifier. And each of these methods, after we make a change, we just need to notify the listeners. And so what this means is it'll reflect the UI for the appropriate widgets that need a change. So if you come back to your main.dart file, just another quick setting up we need to do is we have to wrap our entire app in a change notifier provider. And then we give it the shop class and also just the app. Awesome, so why did we just do that? Now, if you come back to our menu page, we can now get rid of this menu and we're going to be able to now access the shop literally from anywhere in our code so for example right here I can say okay let's get the shop and its menu so to access it let's just say context.read the shop and then from there we can get the food menu and everything else that we need so I'm going to do the same thing just for this build method and if you save it nothing should have changed everything should be working fine now we wanted to come back to our cart button and fill this out, right? So this method, where is it? Yeah, let's fill this one out. So let's just make sure just to save and help the code out. Let's make sure we're only going to add something to the cart if there's something in the cart, meaning the quantity is greater than zero. And then we can access the shop and let's add to the cart and probably a good idea to let the user know that everything was successful. So let's grab our shop and then you can just say shop and then add to cart and just give it the food and the quantity count. And if that went well, then let's just show a quick dialog box and just say, just a quick message saying successfully added. 
Cool. Now we're going to decorate this further, but let's just save it to see how this looks. And there it is. Looks pretty good. So what I'm going to do is also have another button in the actions. And this one is, I just want to show you a nice little UI UX trick. But I want to pop once and then pop again to go to the previous screen. So I'll just show you what this means. Now, when we say popping the screen, it's basically meaning go back. We're going to do that once. Now, I'll show you what that looks like first of all. So let's say we add to cart and we get this box. And if I click the tick, we're going to pop the box and go back, right? Now, I actually want to pop it one more time to go to the previous screen because once the user has made their decision about, you know, this particular food item and once you add it to the cart, it's actually a better idea to just go straight back to the menu. So yeah, that's probably our good user experience. And the other thing is you can actually click not just the tick, but you can click outside of this box as well to dismiss it, which is actually not what I want. So I want to go to this barrier dismissible and say false. Cool, and then now I'm just going to do some quick decoration, just some colors, and change all the text to white. And the button as well should be white. Now what I want to do is in the home page, let's have a icon at the top near the app bar just to go to the cart. In the actions, let's have a new cart button. So you should look for a shopping cart. Cool. Cool. Now I haven't created a cart page, so let's just do that real quick. And let's just put in a blank scaffold just for now. And we should come back to our main dot dot to have another route to our page. So now we can say navigated dot push named and then go to the cart page. Sweet. There we go. We can navigate to our new page now. Cool. Now, one thing is you see those colors on the app bar. Looks like we specifically like manually gave them colors for individual widgets. So I'm going to get rid of that. And instead, you can see that those colors for the app bar, you can say the foreground color, you can just specify it for the entirety. So that should make our code cleaner. And now we can finally come to our cart page and start decorating it. So let's just start off with an app bar which I want to change the color. And in the body, let's have a list view builder. Cool, and just to have a bit of a plan. So the first thing is to get the food from the cart and get the food's name and then the food's price. And then let's just return the UI as a nice list, list tile. Now to access our shop's information and we want to consume the data, we're going to wrap this entire scaffold in a consumer widget. And you see this value, this is how we can access all of the values in our class. So the first thing is I just want to get the individual food, right? So go to the values cart and then just the individual index. So same thing for the item count, just however long our cart is. Cool, from here it's easy. So food name, just get the food name. Same thing for the food price. And then finally we can return it as a list tile. So we can specify the title and the subtitle. So again, let's just see how this looks. If I add some to the cart and you go to the cart, yay, it looks like it's working. Cool, so now we can just do some decoration. So I want a button here to delete, remember? So let's have one for the trailing. And so, yep, there's our little bin. Now, before we code up the functionality for the removing, let's just decorate this up a tiny bit. So I'm just gonna put a container around this. And for the color, I wanna use my secondary color. Let's put some space around this guy as well. And I'm going to invert all of these text colors. And the name of the food, let's make it bold. And the subtitle, just for the price, I'm just going to not make it bold, but make it a little gray. So just switch it up a bit. And same thing for the delete button. Cool. And the actual entire background for this whole page, I just want to make it that primary color. 
and we're going to need to make the elevation here zero. Cool, so yeah, this is the look I wanna go for, except for the fact that the borders, we should make it curved. And that looks pretty sleek. Okay, so coming back to our list view, you can see I wanna have a pay button on the bottom. So I'm gonna wrap this list in a column. So the first section is the cart. And then below that, let's have the pay button. So we already created a button in the previous video. So I'm just gonna say pay now, and for now let's just execute nothing. And it's not building, and I know why. Anytime we have a list view inside a column, you have to put it in an expanded widget, because we have to specify the size. Cool, there it is. Except for the fact that on the bottom, we're gonna need some padding. And that looks pretty good. Okay, now just to finish off, let's just uh, code up the functionality here. So for removing the cart, we need to know which food we're looking at, right? And then we can just get access to the shop. And I'm actually gonna need access to the context to be able to do this. So I'm just gonna require that as a parameter. Cool, so I got the shop and then now I can just say, let's just remove it. And I think that should be good. Let's check this out. Let's restart this. Okay, so I'm gonna add an item to the cart. And let's remove it. Yay, everything's working. Cool, so now we've got the cart functionality to be done. So next thing we can code up is the payment page. So let's keep building this up. We've made some really good progress so far. Let me know if you have any questions about any of the code. I'm happy to help out below. But thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.